Wow, that's quite the introduction. <laughs> I do have to put a disclaimer out there right now. I'm no longer serving as a special assistant U.S. attorney. I'm currently at Charlottesville, Virginia, receiving my LLM in military law with a specificity in contra government contracts. <clears throat> so before I begin, I just want to say welcome you all and good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning to my honorees, <laughs> Mrs. Sharif, Shanif Curl, parents, teachers, students, family and friends. I am honored to be here today. And before I begin, I would like to recognize and thank two amazing people who are responsible for my today's presence. Ms. Ava Morton and Mrs. Nancy Britton Jeffrey. Thank you. Both. So years ago, without naming how many, because it may give away my age, I too once sat in a high school setting, being recognized for my many academic accomplishments. So as I prepared my remarks, I asked myself a question that many of us young folks may do throughout different stages of our lives. What would I tell the younger version of me? And three words came to mind. First, adaptability. Second, trust. And third, change. This morning, I'm going to talk about how each word had an impact on the woman you see before you today. When I think of adaptability, my mind travels to my plebe year at West Point. Plebe year is synonymous with a freshman year at a normal university or college. Well, I was six weeks into my plebe year and my classmates and I received our six weeks interim grades. And at six weeks, my grades were horrific. I had four Fs, one D, one C, and only one B. With grades as bad as mine, I was canceled by one of my upperclassmen supervisors who said that although I had good military bearing, she questioned whether I had the intellect to make it through the academy's rigorous academic curriculum. Before that counseling, I was already struggling with whether I made the right decision to attend the academy, and if this Philly girl truly belonged. But my supervisor's counseling, although honest, triggered something in me. So in my mind, I was like, who is she to question or assess whether I can make it or not. She does not know me or my capabilities. For all honesty, I was mad at myself for putting myself in this predicament and not realizing that what got me into West Point is not gonna keep me at West Point. Yeah, I was smart and always excelled academically and knew deep down these grades were not a true reflection of who I am or my capabilities. So, I needed to learn how to adapt. West Point was so different than any other environment I experienced in my 18 years of life. Most of my classmates were valedictorians, received their studies through private education, and some even came from wealthy families. But many of them were humble and were willing to offer assistance if asked. So as I learned my new environment, I learned how to adapt by changing my perspective, improving my studying habits, practicing time management, and more importantly, letting go of my pride and asking for help if I struggled with a subject. By adapting, I brought all my grades so when 10 weeks grades were published, I no longer had any failing grades. And by the end of that semester, I had a GPA of 2.17. <laughs> the next semester, I improved my GPA to a 2.49 and finished that year with a cumulative GPA of a 2.33. Then my semester of my young year, which is basically my sophomore year, 
I had a GPA of a 2.91. And also, that was the last semester that I did not make the dean's list. Over the next five semesters, my lowest GPA was a 3.23. And I ultimately graduated from West Point with a GPA, a cumulative GPA of a 3.0. But if I did not adapt, I would not have made it. Which leads me into my next word, trust. Coming from the environment I came from, I did not trust too many people. It was very defensive at any sign of critique. It was not until my first year, which is my senior year at West Point, that a wise instructor pulled me aside and told me that I'm very smart, but there's something that she noticed throughout our classroom instruction, which is that I lack trust from within. I thought that I was extremely confident, but being confident in one area does not tr always translate into aspects, all aspects of one's life. Although it was true, I was confident in certain aspects of my life, for example, in track. I was very confident that I could win certain races. But in the classroom setting, I was not as confident and second guessed myself quite frequently. Years later, it came to me that although I did perform well academically, I still struggled with an insecurity that was on display in a classroom setting that encompassed more than regurgitation, but more so in-depth analysis. My insecurity was that people may see that I did not belong because deep down, I struggled with belonging. However, this amazing instructor was able to see through it and remind me that I am not only smart, but, I, but that I am more than an athlete and have much value to add despite my own disbelief. I would love to say that I instantaneously became a new person and developed a high level of self-assurance, but that would not be the case. I struggled in my first assignment as an Army officer with that same issue. But eventually, with self-awareness, I learned how to trust myself. And trust in myself allowed me to trust others. <coughs> This instructor later on became the first female dean at the academy. I thank her years later because self-trust is key. Because the world will doubt you. But if you doubt you, you're already defeated. My last and final word is change. Change for me did not come easy and I resisted it at all costs. Although I learned how to adapt I did not want to become unrecognizable to those who knew me during my formative years. I wanted to remain this tough Philly girl who spoke her unfiltered mind regardless of people's sensibilities. It was not until my company's PAPCO officer, who was the officer in charge, whose job was to oversee our company's cadet leadership, called me into his office and asked me to look into the mirror and if I liked what I saw. Instead of answering affirmatively, I cried. My tactical officer then sat me down, passed me some tissues, <coughs> and told me his unedited thoughts. <laughs> he complimented my intellect and perseverance, but also revealed many blind spots that could be detrimental if left unchecked. At that moment, I knew I needed to change because I worked extremely hard to achieve what I achieved, but knew all of that hard work would amount to nothing if I continued to refuse to evolve into the person I ought to be. Again, as a common theme in my life, change did not happen instantaneously, but it was no longer unwelcome or feared. However, not everyone was comfortable with this new change. But in order for me to evolve, I had to remove myself from situations or people that were in contravention 
to the goals that I have set that require change. Therefore, friends that did not welcome my newfound change, I had to let go. Honorees, you have already set the bar high. And I am extremely proud of each of you. So all you need to do is continue what you already started. But I must admit that what lies ahead is not going to be easy. And that every decision that you're going to make is not going to be the right one. There are even going to be days and times when you want to give up and quit. But just don't. Because who you aspire to be is achievable as long as you're willing to adapt, have self-trust, and be willing to change. Thank you and congratulations.